we're starting with this Friday womb healing live session in just a couple minutes. I'm going to invite everybody out to come join me. Come on in. In just two minutes, we'll get started. today got one more minute before we officially start and let everybody know that we're live I'm doing good. You know, I'm excited about getting started with doing these Friday lives. This is the first one, so it feels good and preparing to talk about everything. Um, we, we also have some future topics that I won't be able to get into today, but I know it's going to be exciting when we get into it on uh, future Fridays. All right. One more minute here. Can you hear me okay? So we are officially getting started here. My name is Yasmin Minifield for those that have, are new to me, never met me before, or maybe have seen some of my posts or loving my content, but don't know a lot about me yet. So here's my background. I started off as a holistic health practitioner back in 2000. 11, I trained with Dr. Africa, Naila Africa, may he rest in peace. He is a naturopath that um, has that did a lot of work around African holistic health. Um, from there, I got my bachelor's in psychology and I became a licensed massage therapist, a certified holistic doula through the Matrona. And I've been doing birth work, holistic health coaching, and coaching mothers and becoming what I would term the matriarchs of their lives and their legacy, the spiritual leaders and those that are mavericks, independent and in setting their own course versus what their ancestral line did before them. So that is who I am. If you have any questions about my background, please let me know. I'd love to explain more about who I am and why I'm doing what I'm doing. So let's go over what we're going to talk about in today's womb healing session. We're going to talk about why this time of the year is so important to us as women and mothers. We're going to talk about what's called the wise women way and approach to healing. And we'll cover some of the questions that were submitted by the people that were planning to attend today. So our agenda has shifted just a little to accommodate what people are most interested in. Um, some of those questions are about recovery from long-term use of birth control, natural birth control methods. And I wanna talk about our relationship with our wombs, our menstrual cycles, and our attunement to natural cycles. We're gonna to touch on fibroids, high estrogen levels, high blood pressure and what high blood pressure means from a holistic 
interpretation. And lastly, we'll end with talking about manifestation. So we're going to talk about what do we birth with our womb other than children? How can we use the power of our womb to manifest our heart's desires? And then we'll talk about how I can further support you guys if you need more support than what is offered through Mother from the Over Overflow, which is our free group. So that's our agenda for today. If you have any questions as I'm talking, please post them in the chat and I can answer them real time as well. So let's dive in. This time of the year is so important. In following the wheel of the year, it's called in bulk. And in bulk is that transition from winter to springtime. It's a celebration of our transition from being cold internally and externally to warming up and getting into that spring internal um, orientation. So, uh-oh. Oh my goodness. I want some ice. Okay, go get some ice, baby. I'm sorry, y'all. I got the three-year-old here. <laughs> so anyway, like I was saying, when we transition from winter to spring, it's not only happening out in nature, it's happening Mommy. internally. Oh goodness, y'all. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Y'all know being mama is a multifaceted job, right? So, hey, Sherry, how you doing, love? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining. And so this time of the year happens in nature, but it also happens internally, where we're transitioning internally from this cold disposition of being internally focused to being externally focused. So as we are becoming more externally focused you might think about when you're in your menstrual cycle and you're transitioning from just having your period over into ovulating that week before that is very similar to what we're going through right now in the seasonal energy and how we are going to experience that internally so in other words this is when we're going from a frozen state we're thawing out and we're letting this new vernal uh, spring-like energy bubble up inside us and we're bringing in joy we're calling in more joy as well so this time of the year i personally find that the veil to the ancestral realm is pretty thin and it's a great time to work with our ancestors to honor them but also get really clear on what our personal vision is for our matrilineal line, how we want to expand it, support it in ascending and reaching a new vibration and level. So take advantage of this time, especially today, tomorrow and the day after. The energy is pretty high, the transitional energy from winter to spring. Right, Megan, it's like, yo, babies, y'all y'all knew mama was about to do this. Why y'all got to act up now, huh? So anyway, <laughs> the next topic we're going to talk about is, is the wise woman approach and way of healing. I wanted to touch on this because as we get into specific areas of womb healing, we need to approach it from a um, gentle and a holistic approach to healing that is not drastic, that is not overbearing that's not steeped in the Western ideology around the body and healing, but is more so steeped in what I would term like a feminine approach to healing. The womb is our feminine center. We cannot approach her from a masculine point of view in healing her. So when she presents us with symptoms and imbalances, we wanna interpret her way of speaking in her language 
through the ways of our ancestors, those ancient women that were tapped in and never knew anything about the Western paradigm or the heroic way of healing. They only knew how to tap in internally, how to connect with the plants, develop relationships with themselves and their plant allies to heal. So in this wise woman way of healing, the first step is to do nothing. And what I mean by that is to rest, not just sleep, but finding that white space where nobody needs to call your name, where you can rest in the void of silence, where you can feel comforted and receive insights from that quiet space. And before you go into adopting someone else's suggestions and advice, methodologies, herbs, whatever you choose to do, energy healing, it's very important to get quiet with yourself and go internal, do nothing, get receptive, and ask for guidance to be led to what you need for you. Because every remedy is not for everybody, right? The way it works for me, may, it may not be the way it works for you. And you wanna set intentions on the next steps you're going to take after the do nothing phase. So whatever you're trying to heal, how you want to feel in that healing process, and really developing a, a deeper sense of commitment because a lot of times when we take this natural road, the results are not instantaneous. We didn't reach a state of imbalance overnight. So it's gonna take us some time to find that state of balance again. And we gotta allow our body, the herbs, the natural remedies, the lifestyle changes to percolate and, and steep in them like herbs in water, we want to extract all the medicinal benefits over time. One of the key pieces of this wise woman way is to drink herbal infusions. Herbal infusions are different from just a cup of tea. So when you drink a cup of tea, we usually steep, steep it no more than 15 minutes. Herbal infusions use a larger amount of loose leaf herb and they steep overnight in at least you know 32 ounces of water so we take a lot more time with the herbs to extract them and their medicinal properties so when you think about this as a metaphor to our own healing sometimes it's going to take longer the process is a little bit more drawn out than we first anticipated but it's important to measure your progress in a very qualitative way so this looks like measuring your stress, your um, hunger levels, your energy levels, your cravings, your mood, and to really measure how you're feeling, you know, your sleep quality as a means to measure your progress over time. So if you can sit down, maybe sit down some time on a Sunday to gauge your qualitative measures of progress each week. This will keep you motivated and committed because you'll see like, I may not have fully resolved what I set out to do, but I'm sleeping better. My menstrual cycles are better. My pain levels are lower. I am, I'm less easily irritated now than I was two weeks ago. These measures of progress in their qualitative approach are how we as feminine beings can track our progress without feeling undue pressure to be better now. You have to be okay in the in-between. You have to. Just like there is a pause between the inhale and the exhale. In that pause, in that transition, that limbo, that liminal space of the in-between is where the healing actually happens. So don't rush your process, okay? So, We'll get deeper into this wise woman approach to healing as we go week to week in these Friday live sessions. But those tenets are important just in and of themselves. Embracing that this may take longer than you anticipated. Being in the in-between and making peace with that. Finding joy in the transition. Um, but also learning how to be still 
do nothing rest and receive guidance and restoration through that rest because a lot of times the next step will be given to you once you get quiet to receive guidance towards it so slow down it's okay and i know that some of the symptoms we're encountering are very uncomfortable they're hard to deal with and they can be painful and exhausting to you emotionally and this is where self-soothing comes into play so if you need more guidance and and really making your self-soothing techniques and tools and measures a bit more robust like going beyond just breath work and movement and baths like we need remedies that are going to soothe us so that we can be still we can be okay even when we're not physically okay we can be okay at a deeper level emotionally and spiritually and mentally to embrace exactly where we are so those soothing remedies are something that we'll be touching on and mothering from the overflow if you go in that group there's also access to a free master class that is a um journey into how to mother from the overflow we go over some techniques and there's also a document in there with plenty of soothing remedies where you can identify your symptoms and find a remedy that you can begin to build a relationship with so that's there for you as a free resource to explore and build out your self-soothing toolbox next we're going to talk about birth control long-term use of birth control how to recover from that but also what this can do for us as an invitation so to start off on a personal note i used birth control from the age of 13 all the way up to 18. i was diagnosed with pcos back then and you know the treatment was birth control and metformin or some other medication to uh, moderate your blood sugar and to make you more insulin sensitive. Well, imagine taking all this birth control at the peak of my puberty and my body really had a hard time finding hormonal balance once I came off of the birth control. But it also invited me into this personal journey of really understanding how do my hormones work? If I want to come off of birth, uh, regular birth control, like what do I do to take charge of my fertility? Um, what damage did the birth control do and how can I reverse that? So the first piece I wanna bring up is that the body is smart, it's very intelligent. We, liter we literally house the intelligence of God in every cell of our body, okay? So let's give her a little credit. But one of the things she does is we release toxins in the order in which we took them in. So when we go and come off of a medication like birth control or another, the body has stored a lot of the byproducts and toxicity from that medication in your body tissues. And as you begin to detox from it, it won't immediately release that which was taken in just yesterday okay excuse me it will it will immediate release that so if we had taken in something that was toxic to us yesterday that's going to be the first thing that's detoxed in our detox experience and the body will then release toxicity in layers all the way back to childhood i had experience in this in my early years of healing and working with my uterus to find balance in my, my endocrine system. So I would do a lot of um, fasting techniques, uh, periods of eating raw foods in the early days to detox. And what I noticed was that um, it was true. Like for instance, I had an ear issue. I got stung by a bee on my ear <laughs> and I got antibiotics and the drops put into the ear. And I was, as I was fasting, that was one of the first things that started to flare up. My ear actually swelled up and began to drain. 
And then as, as I continued to fast, it cleared up. And this would happen to me intermittently, you know, every few months, my ear would just swell up and drain until one day it stopped doing that. And that part of my system found balance and healing and did enough purging for my body to stop having a detox reaction in that area. So sometimes when we've been on birth control for a long time, it can stay not necessarily in our bloodstream, but in the body tissues, in our fat deposits specifically. So as we detox, it may not be the first thing that is released if we had excess hormones and toxins from these medications. So in other words, again, you wanna stay the course. You wanna stay on your specific protocol of healing and let your body do her thing. Trust her to release things in the order in which they need to be released and in a way that is safe for you. And for her to modulate how fast those things will be released. So some of the things that you can do, going back to the herbal infusions, is drinking these nourishing herbal infusions every day. Some of these key herbs are red raspberry leaf, specifically nettle leaf and red clover are very good for this, this type of cleansing process. Red clover is going to go in and cleanse out ex excess estrogen. It's gonna cleanse your bloodstream and it's gonna help you find balance again. Especially if you have fibroids, red clover is very, very great for treating fibroids. Um, and then the nettle leaf, not only is it um, purifying, but it's very nourishing and very tonifying, like it strengthens the health of your kidneys. So I'm gonna plop a link in our chat for um, a website that just goes into more details about the nourishing herbal infusions. So you can check that out if you want some more information or if you're not currently incorporating the infusions into your um, daily life. So you say, okay, Yasmin, I've come off of birth control. I'm starting to incorporate things like these herbal infusions to begin cleansing my system and balancing my hormones. But what do I do to stop myself from getting pregnant if I'm not ready to have another child right now or ever again? That's a great question. So let's discuss natural birth control. Natural birth control first starts off with developing this relationship with your cycle and your uterus. You want to be in communication. You want to be sensitive to her signals. And she signals you through your symptoms, of course, around your monthly period, but she also will signal you through her discharges. So we all know that, or hopefully we know, that when you ovulate, you're going to see those runny, like, egg white consistency in your discharge. And when you're out of balance, you're going to see discharges that are off color, that may have an odor. These are ways that your body, your uterus, your system is communicating with you. So when you have these symptoms, I want you to really release any guilt or shame around these symptoms. It does not mean that you're dirty or that you're somehow less than. Um, it is simply a way to communicate to you what's going on and what you need. And when you learn what the communications are saying and you develop the relationships with the plants that can help you find balance, the practices, the lifestyle changes. Hey, Asia, welcome, sweetheart. Excuse me, when you develop this relationship with your plant allies and your uterus and your vagina, your hormones, your, your monthly cycle, it's like an ongoing dialogue that you can use to guide you into what you need to be doing to take care of yourself at each phase of your cycle. So that's like step one, develop a relationship with your womb and your cycle. Now, if you're not currently bleeding regularly, this is when you take the step to sync yourself with the moon phases. So 
commonly either we bleed with the new moon or the full moon, right? So, and this, you know, you don't have to be on that, but this is what's most common. So if you're having irregular cycles, you want to treat your body as if she is um, menstruating in rhythm to the moon. So we would count day one of your menstrual cycle as when the new moon arrives. And then you would track your cycle that way, positioning different remedies and movements based on where we are in the moon cycle. If you are menstruating regularly, then of course you would just track your cycle as day one of when you bleed. That's day one, okay? And so when you can track your cycle and you see now when you're ovulating, when you're bleeding, that will also tell you when your luteal phase is occurring. That is the week before you bleed, your luteal phase. The week after you bleed is, begins the follicular phase. And this is when the follicles that would be supporting a possible pregnancy begin to grow. So just like the moon, we're like waxing and waning. We're growing and beginning to house new life, and then we're shedding if we're not pregnant, right? So as you get in tune with when your fertile days are and when you're not fertile, you can then pinpoint a plan that will be multifaceted to track your fertility window. So that means that the, you, your chances of getting pregnant are not ever present in the entire cycle. However, keep in mind that sperm can survive usually around five days in the vaginal canal. So you have to keep that in mind too, as far as your fertility window. So there are some natural remedies that you can use. Um, like neem is my favorite. It has been very effective for me. You can use it in an oil form as a natural spermicide and cut it with a carrier oil like coconut. You can take it in capsule form. And when you take it in capsule form, it actually will prevent implantation of the egg. So that is one measure that I take, um, the neem leaf and the neem oil, as well as tracking my cycle to have a full grasp of when my fertility window is taking place. But of course, if you have other factors that make your menstrual cycle more complicated, you may need a little bit of support in getting to that place where your cycle is truly, um, what's the word? Like, you know when it's coming. It's no question around it. So if you need additional support around that, feel free to send me a message and we can talk about it. We can have an hour to just chat and I can coach you around it and we can take it from there, okay? And of course, again, if you have any questions about what we're covering, pop them in the chat and I'll respond to you. Next, we're gonna talk about fibroids, but specifically in relationship to high estrogen. From Symptoms-based assessments that I've given many of my clients, a lot of them are dealing with high estrogen. And surprisingly, even men are dealing with this. So it's almost like, I hate to say this, but to me, epidemic levels of seeing high estrogen levels amongst our human population in modern times. And so you have to wonder, why do we all have such high estrogen? I have a couple theories around that. One of them is our exposure to um, estrogen-like components. So these are things like um, chemicals that may be in water, non-organic produce, our cleaning materials that can be endocrine disruptors. So that's a great Google term to look up for yourself. Endocrine disruptors. Just pop that in the chat for you. So look into that further. But also, I think it also has to do with low progesterone rates. So one key that would show you you have low progesterone, in women at least, is when you are having trouble with ovulation. So if, you found, if you're finding that you're not ovulating every month, a lot of times it has to do with low progesterone. Or if you've had a history of miscarriages due to low progesterone levels where you're losing the child in the first trimester. This can be an indicator. 
Um, so many of us need to increase our cruciferous vegetable intake. We need to increase our healthy fats and making sure we're getting exposure to sunlight to increase our vitamin D levels and to supplement also. Um, and these are just a few steps you can take in addition to the herbal infusions that we were talking about earlier to begin decreasing that high estrogen level. And so what this has to do with fibroids is that a lot of times fibroids are present in a body that has high estrogen levels. There is a definite connection between the two. So it's important for you to get a baseline of where your hormonal um, levels are currently to really understand what's going on to create a customized plan that's going to help you heal these issues because we don't want to shoot in the dark right so we can do this through getting blood work we can get this through what's called a dutch test um, when you get blood work that will test your your sex and your stress hormones this will give you a lot of information to work with um, the Dutch test is also an option, to, and it will also test stress and sex hormones to give you that baseline, okay? So next we're going to roll right into talking about high blood pressure. This has been affecting women of color disproportionately, and it's very scary, especially when we have um, spikes in blood pressure while we're pregnant and carrying. So I'm not going to delve too deep into blood pressure in this session. But I did want to talk about it from a holistic perspective. When we look at the two numbers, the top and the bottom number, the top number, our systolic number, is related to our sympathetic nervous system. The bottom number, which is our diastolic number, is related to the parasympathetic system. So when we're in that flight or fright mode, most of the time, our high blood pressure is higher or farther away from the ideal, the ideal being 120. And when we're in a state of being too cold, too detached, where the parasympathetic system is overly engaged, then the diastolic number is further away from the ideal, being 80. So the ideal blood pressure is 120 over 80. So if you can take a blood pressure reading and see which number is farthest away from the ideal, it'll give you a preview of what is going on with your nervous system specifically. And then you can upregulate or downregulate your nervous system based on those results. So what that means is either you need to excite the energy of your body where things are just moving too slow, or you need to slow down the energy of the body where things are moving too fast so that's just one snapshot of the holistic interpretation of blood pressure we'll be jumping in more into that in the in the series to come um and let's end out the session with talking about the importance of getting in touch with our internal rhythms the natural rhythms and what this has to do with manifestation through our room's power center so when we get in touch with our internal rhythms, that is what I mean by know, building this relationship with our womb, our vaginal canal, and our hormones. Because when we understand those four phases of our menstrual cycle, we can also understand the way we need to plan our activities and our approach and orientation to the external world based on where we're at in the cycle. So, for instance, when you're ovulating, you're more engaged, you're more externally driven, you're wanting to be seen, you want attention, we usually want to, we feel beautiful, so we want to spend more time paying attention to our dress, our makeup, our hair, um, and so this is the time when you want to plan for things that you got to be engaged as much as possible, like right now, doing this live, this is the perfect thing to do while ovulating. Um, and then this is also the time in your cycle where you're noticed, similar to the full moon, that the things that you planted in you to manifest, start to manifest and come to fruition during the ovulation part of your cycle or with the full moon. 
So what I mean is this. We can subconsciously, psychically, and at a womb level get pregnant with things other than children. We can get pregnant with a goal. We can get pregnant with a way of being. We may have a healing we want to get pregnant with. So, for instance, let's say you notice that you have a tendency to be anxious or avoidant with others. You can set a goal that you'd like to heal this emotional and behavior pattern. Go into a deep state of meditation around what this looks like and plant that into the subconscious mind through that process. Now, when you do this and you get pregnant with it, you're gonna immediately start to go through a clearing process. You'll find that that happens when you're actually bleeding. So you know how a lot of us will experience PMS symptoms or maybe looping thoughts you may have worries and things like thoughts that are just kind of more negative in our self-talk around our actual period this is because your body and your mind on a cellular level really you are clearing out things that no longer serve you based on the things that you have gotten pregnant with whether you consciously or subconsciously did it we're all focused on things that we desire for ourselves, right? We sit with it, we daydream about it, we write about it sometimes. And so you'll go through this clearing process while you're bleeding. So the next time you're on your cycle, I want you to take a detached observer view of the thoughts that are coming through your mind. And ask yourself, is this a thought that is being cleared out because it no longer serves me? Is this thought actually true? And if you find the answer is, man, it's not true. This is probably a clearing thought, something that needs to be cleared out from your system. In that moment, you can hear, you use a command word, clear, heal, transmute, to support this process. After you bleed, you've done this clearing process, now you're rolling into this manifestation process where it's ready to come through the same way that we have to matriculate through the whole pregnancy before the physical baby can be born. We go through this birthing process every month. <laughs> so as you come into that follicular phase, the building phase of your cycle, just like your body is creating the follicles that are going to help you get pregnant, your body, your mind, your psyche, your being is preparing for what you need, what you need to gather in, new ways of thinking, being, feeling, in order to manifest your goal. So remember our sample goal was to clear these anxious avoidant behavior and emotional patterns. So if that was my goal, when I go into bleeding, then I might notice more of this happening. I may actually have a healing crisis, so to speak, where things get worse before they get better, but it's not a time to panic about it. It's a time to dig in and clear it. So if you have an altar set up, if you like spiritual baths, if you do yoga, Whatever your modality is when you need to release and clear something, you wanna lean into that practice when you notice that you're having a clearing happening. So that way, to the extent that you clear out this stuck, this old emotional patterns, that would be the degree to which you can then bring in and call in uh-oh, we had somebody that could not access the event. Hold on. Hmm. One second, y'all. Let's see how we can get her in. Um. Anyway, so this is the extent to which you can call in newness. So you can call in 
the new behavior pattern. So in this example, we would be calling in security. We would be calling in an open heart. So I could use affirmations and I could go into my spiritual bath with things like rose petals and calendula, calendula flowers and cinnamon sticks. I can, you know, take my tea with a little bit of honey to add sweetness to my process. And these practices will help me draw in the new way of being during the follicular phase. So as we travel through this manifestation process via our cycle, then we get to ovulation. So this is when you're gonna start to see the fruition of everything you've been working on. So in this example, I should notice a sh natural shift inside where I'm not as anxious, I feel more secure, and I'm able to openly relate to others without um, avoiding communication in deeper levels. I'm not going to avoid in intimacy, I'm going to walk towards it. So that's just one example of how we can use our menstrual cycle, which is the power of our womb, which is the power of our divine femini femininity, our innate power, the internal, internal lunar cycle, to manifest things, to birth things other than children. So we've covered a lot today. I really appreciate you taking time to tune in. If there are other topics you want me to cover and to go more in depth around, I am always taking ideas. Just send me a private message and I'll add it to the docket, so to speak. Um, I'm gonna end out our session today with a reading. I'm using the Kuan Yin Oracle deck today. I use this and sometimes the Asar Aset deck. The Asar Aset deck is the only one I use for reading. So if you ever want a reading with me, just private message me and I'll send you the link to book that. Because it's important to address the deeper energetic patterns that are driving our physical symptoms and realities. This can sometimes be why you could spend a whole year doing all the things, eating all the foods, taking the herbs, moving the body, getting the treatments, and not see any resolution or healing in your womb. Sometimes it has less to do with the physical and more to do with the non-physical. What we've inherited on a DNA level from our mothers and grandmothers these things have to be cleared as they are the roots. Hey, Saran, welcome, man. The energetic roots to what our physical symptoms are. So some of us are already versed in tarot and oracle, different divination systems. Hey, Brittany, if we are versed in these systems, we need to utilize them to dig and find the energetic roots, what we need to address in our bloodlines to clear and heal these things. All right, I'm just going to take these two. We had a couple fall out. This is a collective reading for all those that are with me live, but it's also for those that tune in later for the replay. The first card that came up, I don't know if you guys can see this, is your enlightened heart. The wish of the Divine Mother is that you become free. Enlightenment is a culmination of many small steps. Each one as a drop of water forming a divine ocean of peace, realization, love, and unity within. An ocean that washes away fear, separation, and scarcity and bathes us in abundance and bliss. You carry the torch of enlightenment within your heart. Let it shine. I think this is a beautiful message because it, it's really capturing what we were talking about today. Healing happens in these small incremental steps over time and we cannot rush the process, but we can find comfort in the bosom of the Divine Mother 
that is like that ocean of peace, realization, love, and unity within us is always accessible to us. The second one is Orchid Priestess of Destiny. The Orchid Priestess of your highest spiritual destiny calls to you now. She inspires you to discover and express your purpose. You are encouraged to live into your potential with all its uniqueness and beauty. Her sweet flute playing deep in your heart, blossoms of orchid and chrysanthemum falling from her feet. She stirs your heart to quest for your true soul passion. For me, this resonates in that we all have to download whatever our vision is for our legacy, for the future generations, but also to understand what type of healing is needed for the past generations through us. We stand at the transition between the past and the future. And we have to stand strong in that. And womb healing is a huge part of that calling. It's a lot of responsibility, but you have everything you need within you to stand underneath that and not let it feel burdensome. So I'm going to drop a link in our chat. It's actually a link to schedule a free call with me. If you need support, if you want to talk, about some of the things that we mentioned if you're dealing with specific challenges in your womb healing journey feel free to just schedule with me find a time that works for both of us so we can chat but if you're pretty sure that you're ready to hop into a deeper container with me there's two ways to work with me you can get into my group program it's called mother goddess matriarch or you can work one-to-one -one with me with personalized coaching where we meet every other week. And you would be included in the group program free of charge for that 90 days that you spend with me. I won't go into more detail about it, but if you want more details, just reach out or book a call so we can talk about how I can best serve you right now. I'm here, so if you have any thoughts, realizations questions that come up as a result of watching this video simply post them either on the event page or in the group mother from the overflow and i will answer you okay y'all be blessed and have a wonderful day